Blog Talk Radio. Raw living is a state of mind, a way of being in alignment with your body. Raw living means you put yourself and your body first. Your host, Gita Sadu Rob, is the founder of Nosh Detox, located in the UK. They offer innovative raw food smoothies sold across Europe. You experience it in your skin, your body, and your mind. And now it's time for Living Raw Radio. Hello and welcome to Lunchtime with Angie Michael. I do hope you're well and I hope you're eating lovely food that's not refined and I hope you haven't got a cup of coffee in your hand and I certainly hope you haven't got a glass of wine in your hand. Okay, we ready to start? So it's Lunchtime with Angie and we're going to be talking about sleep disorders. I guess the majority of people who are having lunch with me now have some form of sleeping disorder. Sleep disorders cannot, they can last a short term, they can last long term. Either way, it can make you feel unstable on a mental or on a physical level. Some of you have tried and tested many ways to combat insomnia. My advice to you is never give up trying. Try new methods and try some of the ones you have tried in the past. They might not have worked in the past, but who's to say that they're not going to work now? Always keep at it. Now, whether you're a new victim to a sleep disorder or, dare I say, to dab hand at it, I'm here to support you today. And let's see if we can uh, resolve these issues for you. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the background of sleeping disorders. You know, what could be causing them? Let's start with possible psychological disorders that can lead to insomnia. There's depression, of course, which is a mood disturbance characterized by feelings of sadness, despair and discouragement. Now, if you do suffer depression or you are unsure if it is depression, please do go and seek help from your local practitioner who can advise you on how to remove the depression. Sometimes this can take a while, but with the right support, it can go and that will help you get a good night's sleep. So that's highly important. Now, another psychological disorder, of course, (laughs) if you want to call it a disorder, is stress. It is certainly full of symptoms symptoms you do not want to have and one of them is not being able to sleep. So how effectively a person copes with an emotional or physical or social, economic or other factors requires a response or change. So if you have stress in your life, you have to unravel the reasons why you have it and rectify it. By making these changes, you will have less stress in your life because stress has been known to keep people awake at night. And then, of course, there's anxiety, a condition in which individuals feel increased tension, apprehension, and feelings of helplessness, fear, worry, and uncertainty. I mean, this may be due to the effects that other people at work have on us or financial worries, concerns over relationships, whatever the cause of your anxiety. Oh, and it could, of course, be a hormonal imbalance. This can keep you awake. We must not forget that a lack of a good night's sleep can lead to these very same psychological disorders that I've just mentioned. And a vicious cycle can develop, okay? So getting a good night's sleep is important. And I know that it's not always easier said than done. But, you know, let's go through it a bit today and see what we can do. Okay, so once again, if you do have long-term stress, depression or anxiety, seek professional counselling or see a sleep coach who can help resolve these issues. And, of course, eating the right foods at the end of the day can also help, which I shall talk more about later. Let's look into the physical causes that can attribute to a sleep disorder. Decreased melatonin is one of them. Melatonin is a hormone excreted from your brain and is known as the hormone of darkness. This hormone, it works on the levels to help you sleep. It controls sleep. There are actually foods that help support your melatonin level, which we need to uptake. When you do get older, your melatonin starts to decline. So you might need a little bit of help. And there are some wonderful foods that can do that for you. Brown organic rice, bananas, tomatoes, cherries, porridge, popcorn, and lettuce and corn. They are all types of food that you can eat to restore your melatonin level. So I always recommend to people who do have insomnia at the end of the day, maybe a really good yeast-free piece of 
whole grain bread with some lettuce on the top can aid sleep. Now, red bell peppers are high in vitamin C, like all the peppers. And I don't know if you know this, actually, that green peppers are actually red, orange or yellow ones that actually haven't taken their color yet. And I reckon that the, the red, the orange and the yellow actually have more nutrients in than the green ones. Anyway, so the red bell peppers are high in vitamin C, which reduces the stress hormone cortisol in your body. If your cortisol is imbalanced, it may add to a sleep disorder. Now, if you if you came to my lunchtime with Angie talk regarding your adrenal system, we talked a lot about cortisol, adrenals and stress. So get your cortisol balanced. You know, come see me if you want a test or go to see your GP. Get a test done just to see if it is your cortisol or your DHEA that could be causing your sleep disorder. Medical conditions of course, can cause a sleep disorder. This could range from anything from your allergy, arthritis, asthma, heart disease, high blood pressure, and hyperthyroidism. With all of these conditions, I would recommend eating an 80% alkaline food diet to help you feel more balanced and relaxed. Really focus on eating more fruit and vegetables as these foods are alkaline forming. There's the odd fruit, for example, that is acidic, which you might want to avoid, for example, plums or, or rhubarb or cranberries, hence cranberries being used for um, cystitis because the cranberries help strip away the um, toxins that are causing you to have the cystitis pain. So cranberries I, I would avoid at the end of the day because they're too acidic. And at night time, when you go to sleep, your body starts to alkalize itself. What it doesn't need is a belly full of <laughs> acidic foods which can um, irritate you and cause you to wake up. So nice, maybe the vegetables at night time as well, in the evening, not so much fruit. Have lots of lovely fruit throughout the day, and then in the evening have a little bit of protein and grain and, and lots of lovely vegetables to help, to help to alkalize you. Another factor to the physical cause of insomnia is hormonal changes in women. This could be if you are having a period or premenstrual tension, if you're pregnant, or if you're perimenopausal or postmenopausal. During menstruation, progesterone promotes sleep, okay? And levels of this hormone plunge during menstruation, causing insomnia. It's very, very, very common. However, when you're ovulating, progesterone will rise and this can make you feel more relaxed and less prone to insomnia. So some of you might see that there are dips in your sleep disorder. And, you know, maybe monitor it for yourself. Start writing down any patterns that you start to see. Do you have more of a sleep disorder during your period? Now, there are foods that can promote progesterone, for example, egg yolks and dairy products. Now, I'm not a great lover of, of one having a dairy product because I do feel it blocks our lymphatic system, which can affect your immune system and affect your arteries. So I would say keep that to moderation. But, you know, a couple of tablespoons a day of really good, organic, plain, live yogurt is ideal. And eggs are not classified as dairy. Nice free-range, organic eggs would be great. Okay? B6 foods and zinc foods increase progesterone levels. Now, progesterone is a hormone that we need. It's, it's very important for many mechanisms in our body. Um, so eating B6 foods and zinc foods would be fantastic to help increase your progesterone levels. Now, just in case some of you don't know which foods have B6 in, I'm going to give you some examples now of really good sources of B6. Okay, so hopefully you're not all non-fish eaters because B6 is in a lot of fish. If you are, then please do contact me and I will give you an in-depth in length of vegetarian B6 foods. But the highest B6 foods are, for example, tuna, turkey, salmon, cod, red snapper. What else? Oh, bananas. Bananas are great for B6. Let's look at the zinc foods. Okay, so spinach, which you can have for breakfast. It's a great one. There you go, your egg and your spinach and your wholemeal toast. Put some sesame seeds on the top and you have a wonderful breakfast that's going to give you that progesterone. It's going to give you your, your B6. It's going to give you your zinc. Perfect start to the day. Shiitake mushrooms, um, organic free-range lamb or beef, asparagus, 
miso soup, shrimps. Now, maple syrup, every now and again, a little bit of maple syrup won't do you harm unless you're trying to lose weight. So two teaspoons of maple syrup, that's two teaspoons of maple syrup are great sources of zinc. Pumpkin seed, the live yogurt again, great source of zinc. Green peas, that's one of my favorite ways to get zinc into your children. If any of you have children that do not sleep well, when you make their dinner in the evening, add in the green peas, okay? And try and give them a banana a day as well. I wouldn't overdo the bananas, especially if they have a cold or are quite mucousy, and that's the same for you as well, because bananas can be quite mucousy. So avoid when you have a cold or flu or a very mucousy. So putting that aside, bananas are great, okay? Oh, mustard seeds. Just sprinkle them on all your foods. It's a perfect way to get the zinc inside you. And the children, the children wouldn't even notice the mustard seeds. So once again, if any children have insomnia, that is a great way to disguise. As you know, a lot of children don't like a lot of food. So that's a great way to get zinc into their meal. Okay, so during pregnancy, the changes in progesterone levels in the first and last trimester can imbalance your sleep pattern. So once again, get those progesterone foods inside you. The beginning of menopause has been known to cause sleep disruption as hormones are fluctuating intensely and anybody who's gone through the menopause or, or going through the menopause, some people do have symptoms. Some have horrific symptoms. And I strongly advise if that is you, you've got a sleep disorder, you've got the, the menopause symptoms, you really do need to seek professional help from a nutritionist, from your GP, from a specialist, so that you can make your own opinion on how you want to treat yourself to get yourself sleeping better and feeling more calmer during the day. There are some excellent herbs to help combat sleep disorders and fluctuating hormones and they are turmeric, thyme and oregano. They have been known to either support declining progesterone levels or fluctuating hormones. Environmental issues must be taken into consideration. Okay, let's look at the effect of light and other environmental disruptions. This could be excessive light in the evening. If you are, for example, watching TV and you've got the bright light on or you're working and you've got bright light on, whether it's your cooking or reading, that can can disrupt your sleep or not enough light during the day which is linked to sleep disturbances. I would highly recommend that you take a lunch break and good proper sunlight on your face daily and I mean daily. Find out if you are low in vitamin D3 which can be due to a lack of daylight so that's vitamin D3. It is becoming more and more common for one to be lacking in this hormone but it's called a vitamin vitamin D3. So we depend on sleep, we depend on a sleep and wake cycle. This is called the Carcadian rhythm. This rhythm is set by our exposure to, yes, sunlight. Sunlight triggers the skin to form calciferol, commonly known as vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is a hormone which controls the release of melatonin, which as you know, helps you sleep at night time. Good food sources of vitamin D are salmon, sorry veggies, sardines, tuna, goat's milk, shiitake mushrooms and eggs. So can you see eggs come up quite a lot? So, you know, we get really good quality. Don't penny pinch when it comes to eggs, okay? Because you really must get the organic free-range ones and really enjoy them and get all the lovely nutrients from them. Now, if you would like a vitamin D test, do contact me and I can arrange that for you. Now, here's a reminder to all you caffeinated people out there who have insomnia. You know what I'm going to say. Stop taking caffeine. It is keeping you awake. Yep, so all that caffeine, not only does it release your lovely nutrients from your food too quickly, it also can keep you awake at night. It's a given. We all know that. So stop taking caffeine. Even the decaffeinated coffee has caffeine in. So don't let that fool you. Nicotine will react the same. Okay, I'm sure there isn't a single smoker who wants to re remain smoking. They want to give it up, okay? And I highly recommend once again, go and seek a professional who can help you give up smoking. That way you will sleep better at night. Now, unfortunately, there are the partners who keep you awake at night. And this is obviously due to some other reasons, but <laughs> well, let's look at the snoring for now. Um, so snoring, oh, how awful must that be if that's keeping you awake at night? If this is the case, 
suggest to your partner, you know, in a really nice way, to make an appointment with a GP <laughs> to see what could be done to stop the snoring. Okay, because things can be done. You know, it might be just a really simple operation. I know that sounds scary, but some surgery, you know, is done in a minute and and you're okay. And I'm not saying chop their nose off or sew up their mouth. You know, there there can be just a little week inside the nose that can stop the snoring or you know come and see a nutritionist who can see if it's if it's a food related which it can be okay so if all else fails use the earplugs you need that good night's sleep medications can also be a cause of a sleep imbalance you know due to the side effects medications can cause plus some of these medications contain caffeine ask your chemist you know what is in your medication you are taking if there is a substance that could keep you awake speak to your gp about an alternative okay so do you eat refined foods and i'm going to mention the biggie like chocolate late at night bit of a women's thing i think um chocolate contains caffeine and sugar both will keep you awake at night try and cut down on the chocolate and do not have it after 6 p.m the most Effective treatment for insomnia is based upon identifying and addressing causative factors. If you have already tried the physiological factors and you are still not getting a good night's sleep, then maybe, call, maybe the cause is what you are eating. So look at your dietary and lifestyle factors. Eliminate food and drink compounds that impair the sleep process. This includes the coffee, the chocolate, the soft drinks the teas and the cocoa. Avoid eating medium to high sugar content foods after 8 p.m. This includes alcohol. Now exercise 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes early evening. This has been shown to achieve a good night's sleep in some people. Are the minerals and hormones balanced in your body? Get your nutrition practitioner to check for you. Are you eating a good variety of proteins to help initiate sleep? Um, a protein called tryptophan will help you sleep. These foods are cottage cheese, tofu, soybeans, seafood, whole grains, beans, hummus, lentils, hazelnuts, peanuts, eggs once again, organic free-range chicken, tuna, halibut, shrimp, snapper, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. So whilst at work, snack on the sesame seeds and the sunflower seeds and the fruit, hummus, the carrot sticks, celery sticks, it's the perfect way to eat. Get that olive oil in there as well. You can put a little bit of olive oil into your hummus, okay? Serotonin foods can help you sleep, make you feel good. You know, good sources are pineapples, which is definitely one of my superfoods. Avocados, which is definitely one of my superfoods. Eggplant, walnuts, plums, tomatoes, and the good old banana again. Okay, so supplements. We've mentioned a few, so um, magnesium is absolutely fantastic because it relaxes the muscles and can help you sleep. Magnesium spray is a great product to invest in. Niacin, B6, iron, folic acid, 5-HTP and vitamin D3. Now, when taking supplements, I highly recommend you seek professional help before you take any supplements so you know you are getting the right amount because an excess of supplement is not good for you either. You know, maybe you could write down your worries if you have any. That has helped so many people not, not only combat stress but help you sleep. Write down the pros and cons in your life. If you've got more bad scenarios in your life than good, it's about time you made some changes, okay? So not only write it down, do something about it. Meditate before going to bed. Amazing. Helps many people get to sleep. Remove clutter from under your bed. Unplug electricals and clear your mind, okay? Apply acupressure just above your heel and relax. That has actually helped me in the past, I have to say. And another thing, if I can't sleep, I immediately do not let a thought go into my head, okay? Or what you can do is count to a 100 backwards. I don't know one person that has ever gone all the way from a 100 to 1, okay? And still be awake. So that is always worth a try. So let's go back to basics to get you ready for sleep. Develop a bedtime routine and stick to it. Dim the lights an hour before bed. No studying or research an hour before bed. No computer 30 minutes to an hour before bed. Take a nice hot bath before going to bed. Not a shower because a shower will invigorate you whereas a nice hot bath will relax you. Obviously not too hot. So a bath will help relax and soothe your muscles. 
do a nice bit of stretching and relaxing to help relax your mind as much as your body. Even if it's only for 10 minutes, do a nice bit of stretching and relaxing. Now, I hope this has helped you. I'm sure some of you have tried and tested some of what I've said before and you've found new things that I have mentioned. I wish you all the best of luck because I know sleep deprivation can be really, really annoying for you. It can, can really debilitate you. So get working on this, write a shopping list with some of those foods I have mentioned and eat them on a daily basis, okay? I look forward to uh, you joining me next lunch, next Thursday, lunchtime with Angie Michael and um, good luck. Goodbye. bloated? Is your energy levels really low? Do you find everything that you eat goes straight to fat? My name is Candice and I am the naturopathic nutritionist at Nosh Detox. I am here to tell you that your body needs a rest. If that sounds like you, you are ready to try a Nosh Juice Fast. A juice fast is the most natural way for your body to detox while providing you all the life-saving minerals and vitamins that your body needs and craves. From beginners to advanced juices, we have all the options that may be available to you or suited to you. Call me on 0845-257-6674 or go to noshdetox.com and click on the right program for you. I'm right here to help you and support you. Thank you. Detox is an award-winning company for your ultimate health improvement. Nosh Detox system works on all areas of the body, having dealt with thousands of clients whose health dramatically improved within days. For more details, visit noshdetox.com. Noshdetox.com. Welcome to Lunch with Angie. I do hope you're well and enjoying this lovely sunny day. Today we're going to talk about why can't I lose weight. Hmm. Now that's a bit of a tall order. As you know, we are all different. Some people can't lose weight for one reason. Some people can't lose weight for another reason. But we all have a starting point and the starting point is to eat healthy meals throughout the day and to drink plenty of water and to exercise. So whatever our issues are on why we can't lose weight, we must always start with those health factors to get the ball rolling. Lifestyle and general physical influences have a role in weight gain. So I'm wondering, do any of you have the following factors? Do any of these factors I'm going to mention to you pertain to you? So, do you take steroids? Are you diabetic? Do you need to take certain pharmaceuticals and have you had to take them for a long time? Do you suffer from stress? Are you trying to quit smoking? Are you overeating? Do you eat big portion sizes? Do you drink excess alcohol? Do you find that there isn't enough time to exercise? If any of those relate to you, then that could be a reason why you are not losing the weight. Have a good think about that, okay? Now, there there are some general physical influences, for example, water retention. Water retention refers to an excessive buildup of fluid in the circulatory system, body tissues or cavities in the body which can cause weight gain. So, so 
some people automatically know they've got water retention and some people wouldn't know the difference between water tension and having gained weight through fatty deposits. Genes play a, you know, a physical influence on the body. We're all responsible for our own choices to some point. You know, our ability to lose and maintain weight is determined by our genes. One of these genes causes the body not to produce enough leptin. Leptin helps you to feel satiated and satiated means that you to feel full. What you can do is actually always have a small salad as a starter before your main meals because the salad will help you to feel more satiated. Food intolerances. Now that can be an issue. For example, if you have a bit of a pooch, you know, where your tummy sticks out a little bit, it's a bit distended. If you see that happening on a regular basis and you feel you are exercising regularly and you are eating well, then the distended tummy could be due to fluid retention caused by inflammation and the release of certain hormones. In addition, there is fermentation of foods in the intestines, which can result to a swollen, distended tummy. You know, mixing lots of foods together can irritate the tummy, which can cause bloating. And also, certain allergies or intolerances can cause bloating. Your metabolism, that can be a big part. Thank you very much for the question that came through. The question was, I've been on a calorie counting diet for 10 days, eating 1,300 calories a day and have only lost one pound. Is it the type of foods I'm eating? Well, the question to this is, yes, it could be, but it could also be your metabolism. Your metabolism turns your food and drinks you ingest into energy. A slow metabolism results in fewer calories burned each day. The fewer calories burned, the higher you risk for weight gain. So if you do have a slow metabolism, you will need to go on a healthy eating regime for longer than others to help you reach your health and weight goals. You do have to keep an eye on carbohydrates. However, carbohydrates are a very important food that we must eat on a daily basis and one should never, ever not eat carbohydrates. It's all about the type of carbohydrates you eat. That is the key. Brown rice, lovely. With a salad and some lentils, you have a perfect meal there that gives you the essential proteins that you need for growth, repair and mental capability. If you eat the wrong type of carbs, I'm sure we all know what the wrong type of carbs are, uh, white bread, white pasta, too many biscuits, too much cake. If you do this on a daily basis, those carbs are going to only give you a short burst of energy, then your energy will drop and you will want to eat more to try and get a more sustained energy. But for example, if you eat brown rice and short whole grain organic rice is the best rice to eat. If you eat short whole grain brown rice that is great for sustaining energy not putting weight on um, and it's great for cleaning the bowels as well so look at the carbs you're eating another great complex carb is fruit and vegetables and juicing fantastic so yes metabolism can play a big part in how long it will take you to lose your weight water retention also will play a part in that and genes and food intolerances another physical influence would be hormones if your ratio of progesterone to estrogen is disturbed, you can find that the excess estrogen causes fat to be stored in the abdominal area. That becomes more and more common in women maybe over 35. You will sometimes, if you become estrogen dominant for one reason or another, it can lead to your body, which can lead to a pear shape, uh, also known as fat around the middle. So if you do feel that whatever you do to try and help yourself lose weight, whether it's eating 100% perfectly for weeks on end and exercising perfectly weeks on end and you still have the fat around the middle, it might be worth going to your GP and asking for some tests. So go see your healthcare provider and say, please may I have a, a, a hormone test because I'm holding on to weight around the middle and it's not shifting. I'm wondering if it's related to my hormones. Once again, I can help you with that if you want. Just email me or call me. So yes, estrogen uh, dominance. As your body struggles to maintain a hormone balance, your body fat becomes more valuable because estrogen is maintained by abdominal fat. 
So estrogen dominance can also cause the thyroid gland to become sluggish, which is becoming more and more common. In my clinic, I see regularly people who have just been diagnosed or are on the borderline of having a thyroid issue. And it is more common for it to be a, a low thyroid, a hypothyroid rather than hyperthyroid. So if you have a sluggish thyroid, it can turn to weight gain. So uh, please do, if you need any help with that, do call me. Cortisol, also the stress hormone, <laughs> uh, tells the body to store fat. So excess cortisol causes weight gain and insulin resistance. High cortisol levels can occur when there is regular stress in your life. So you need to start maintaining your stress levels. If you find that you are somebody that tends to suffer from stress on a daily basis and it has been going on for a long time, you need to look into how you can maintain that stress, as in remove it from your life, maintain the way you act towards the stress, change the way you do it and maintain that pattern so you don't keep on getting the stress, physical and mental feelings that will then create your adrenals to cause a cortisol issue, which will then lead to weight gain and insulin resistance. Make the changes to stress and it might help you lose the weight. The body has wonderful mechanisms that if you help it along, it will help you. Okay, <laughs> has anybody ever said to you while well, you've been on a tube, would you like a seat, madam? If you are not pregnant and you have been offered a seat on the tube, this might just be a good indication that you have a gut issue. What do you do? Well, if there's pain as well as the bloating and excess weight, I would recommend you go to see your healthcare practitioner who can advise you on what tests would need to be done and how to eat to get to the bottom of what is causing a gut issue. I've noticed in my clinic that many a person has said to me when I say to them, how long have you have the gut issue. They say, oh, for years, I've just lived with it, really. I've tried this and I've tried that and it hasn't worked. If it's been an ongoing gut issue or weight around the middle or throughout the whole of your body, always go and see somebody in the know. It's highly important. Just looking things up on the internet is not the answer because remember what I said at the beginning of this call, we are all different, okay? And your GP and your healthcare practitioner, your naturopath, whoever it is you want to see will help you understand what is going on in your body and help you rectify it. With nutrition, it's not a therapy where you lie back and think of England. For example, acupuncture, massage. These are therapies where you actually don't have to do anything. With nutrition, you do. And that's where a lot of people have an issue. They need to understand that you will reap the rewards if you listen to your practitioner and you do what is asked of you. That is where you reap the rewards. Nutrition is therapy where you have to do something for yourself. And you will learn something about yourself as you go on that journey to heal yourself. When you see a GP, you might find out that your intestines are blocked for one reason or another, usually constipation. Colonics can sometimes help. That can ease the symptoms that you can have with a bloating tummy. Do send some questions through. I would absolutely love to hear from you. You can email them through and I will see them now and we can talk about it. Wait when you put your mind to it and you understand your body will come off but it does take dedication from yourself. How do you start your day? Do you start your day by rushing around? Is that causing your cortisol to rise? Do you start your day by having a coffee, which acts as a diuretic on your body, which removes the nutrients from your body, which means you aren't getting the nutrients that will make you feel satiated, which will then make you feel hungry, and you will binge on the wrong foods. One of my favorite rules when it comes to weight loss is what is in your cupboard and fridge at home. If there's anything refined or sugary that isn't fruit, then it shouldn't be there. Your home is your sanctuary and keep it that way. Your body is a temple. Go into your mind regularly and focus on how you should look after that temple. Okay? What is in your fridge? Is cheese in there? Is milk in there? Is a cake in there? How much butter do you put on your bread? Maybe you should go for the non-hydrogenated margarine organic for a little while. What's in your cupboard? Do you have tinned fruit in your cupboard that has has added sugar? Do you have other tinned foods that have added sugar? Do you buy the fridge soups 
the ones that have a short fridge life, that have added cream and sugar. All of this can account to weight gain. When you go to a restaurant, do you accept the bread that comes to the table? Just say no. You can do it. Be brave and just move on from the bread. Bread can really cause weight gain on a regular basis. Croissants can cause weight gain. Are you having a latte? Are you having something similar to a latte? These can cause weight gain. Think about all the milk that is in there. Some people have some very unusual concoctions from some of the coffee shops now that actually have syrup in. That's a no-no in my book. Not only is it not going to help you lose weight, but it's actually very good for your, very bad for your blood sugar level and very sticky on your, on your insides. So try and avoid those, those type of drinks if you can. Start the day with freshly squeezed lemon juice in water. Not every day, but you know, some days have that to drink. Maybe have a nice juice. Maybe have some juice days maybe have some soup days remember how you chew your food if you chew your food slowly it's known as soupy if you get everything in your mouth almost into the state of soup it's digested a lot better it's assimilated through the body better the nutrients are used and when you use your nutrients in your body you feel more satiated if you're a person that craves chocolate your body's telling you that it needs something and you've trained your body to get it from the bar of chocolate but it's the wrong source of nutrients if you're craving the chocolate you are more than likely needing to balance your minerals balance your proteins and certainly balance your essential fatty acids if you get those nutrients in your body keep at it keep at it at some point you will find that you will not be craving those bars of chocolate. And how many of you have a bar of chocolate in your home right now? And if any of you are thinking it's for the kids, because the kids shouldn't have it at home either. There's so many wonderful, sweet foods you can eat that are not manufactured confectionery. Now, as you know, there have been, it's known that there are certain chocolate bars that have 15 teaspoons of sugar in them. What is that doing to your and your children's insides? Even if it has five teaspoons in, what is it doing to you? You know, we're a nation that are turning into obesity and into a diabetic epidemic. It is getting worse. Only us can take control of us as an individual. We have to take care of the children of the future and make sure that those foods are not in our house where we become more susceptible to heading towards the cookie jar, heading towards the fridge with the cakes in. If these foods are always in our home, we will eat them. Always keep your food at home nice and healthy. When you go to a restaurant, try and add the salad first to satiate yourself, to alkalize yourself. Look at your portion sizes. If you are eating big portions, have a good think about why you could be doing that. And is it a certain type of food you're heading to all the time? Because if it is, then your body is possibly lacking in a nutrient that it really needs, but you're heading it down the wrong path. So go back to your books. Or go and see a nutritionist or a naturopath. Go and see somebody who will find out what it is that your body is lacking in and that if you put that in your life, you will see a change. Now, none of these changes happen overnight. Remember, this isn't a therapy of lie back and think of England and, whoa, I feel great all of a sudden. This is a therapy where it takes time. Your body has to work on so much information. It has to get through barriers that we've created. Once these barriers have been broken down and the body can function better and the nutrients go into your body and you feel more satiated, you will not have those cravings so much. Cravings come when the body either has excess of something in it or not enough of something in it. If you keep giving yourself white wheat bread, your brain starts to think that's what it should always have. You need to retrain your brain. If your body keeps thinking it wants chocolate, your body is more than likely lacking in a nutrient. If you can make these changes, you will reap the rewards. And of course, exercise comes into weight loss. If you have tried exercising, let's say you've gone hmm, to the gym every day and it doesn't work for you, then maybe that's not the exercise that you should be doing. Maybe you should try a little bit of intense workout in short spurts. Maybe you should try Pilates or maybe you should try yoga. Remember, what works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. Drinking water is really important to help flush out the system, flush out the excess um, xenoestrogens 
flush out those excess hormones that we do not want to get held into your fatty deposits, okay? This is all very, very, very relevant to helping you feel more balanced. Your hormones play such a big part in balancing your weight. Okay, so thank you. Another question's come through. Does a gluten-free diet help with weight loss? That's a very good question, and I would say the answer is yes. The reason being is gluten is very much what it says in the packet, <laughs> in the word gluten. Gluten is a little bit like wallpaper paste. It's like there's a little man inside your intestines coating your intestines with glue. Now, if you can imagine you've got that glue coating inside your intestines, how are you going to absorb your nutrients? You're not. And if you do, not as well as you'd like it to be. Okay, if you're not absorbing your nutrients, you will not feel satiated. And what will that make you do? Go and eat again. So excess gluten does not help. Remove the gluten for a little while and see if that does help. Now, another lovely question's come through. Do you advocate a vegetarian lifestyle? Actually, I do. And if, oh, but only, only if you do it correctly. If you do not do a vegetarian lifestyle correctly, you will become ill and you can gain weight. If you do a vegetarian lifestyle correctly, your mind will be clearer, your bowels will be clearer and it will help you lose weight. Okay. Now some people do eat just a little bit of meat maybe once a week. That's fine as long as it's free range and organic. If it is not organic, as most of you know, growth hormones are injected into animals. Who then eats the meat? Those growth hormones can affect your estrogen levels and other hormones, which on a long-term basis can cause weight gain. Unfortunately, it has been scientifically proven now that the younger generation who unfortunately um, eat for from takeaways on a regular basis from uh, chicken and chip shops. They eat so much chicken on a weekly basis. Those chickens have been injected with the growth hormones. It is now affecting our youngsters' fertility. Okay, we're going back to the xenoestrogens, estrogen dominance. So the question was, do I advocate uh, a vegetarian lifestyle? Yes, I do, as long as you do it correctly. Okay, if you need help with that, you're more than welcome to come for a consultation. Okay, I have another question here. Whoa, it's a long one, but let's see what we can do. It's somebody says that they go to the gym most days and can't lose the fat tummy. Well, my love, basically everything I have said, if you put that into place, let's see what happens. Watch that space. <laughs> Watch that tummy space and let's see it go. Okay, so this person went to the doctor and saw a nutritionist and they all say your weight, her weight is okay. It says my weight is okay. Okay, my size and my age but I'm not happy with that. Without seeing you, and I cannot judge, I'm afraid. If I could see you, then we could talk. So good luck, and I hope you lose the weight that you need to lose. It's important that we do not go underweight, because then you will become malnourished, okay? Do not starve yourself. Those diets do not work, okay? If you are somebody that stops eating lots and lots of foods, for example, carbs and good essential fatty acids for a long period of time and then you reintroduce them, it, it's not a good diet. If you starve yourself, your body goes into starvation mode and then it holds on to everything for dear life to make sure that you do not starve to death. It's a natural mechanism. That's why, very sadly, you see in third world countries children who are literally starving to death, who have pot bellies. Their body is frantically trying to hold on to whatever it is to give them the nutrients and to stop them from dying. So the point I want to make here is please do not starve yourself. It is not the answer. The answer is to eat a well-balanced diet. And then if you know you are healthy and you have been eating well, you could go on a juice fast because it has all the nutrients in and that will help. If you do have any questions, please do call or email and uh, when I have time I shall definitely answer your question for you. And please do keep sending in the uh, questions while on the lunch with Angie. I love them coming in so I can help you on a more personal level. I look forward to uh, listening to you, uh, speaking to you all next week. I can see another question has come through. I shall answer that on a personal level. Okay, so have a happy day and speak to you next week. Thank you. Bye. Do you feel bloated?
bloated? Is your energy levels really low? Do you find everything that you eat goes straight to fat? My name is Candice and I am the naturopathic nutritionist at Nosh Detox. I am here to tell you that your body needs a rest. If that sounds like you, you are ready to try a Nosh Juice Fast. A juice fast is the most natural way for your body to detox while providing you all the life-saving minerals and vitamins that your body needs and craves. From beginners to advanced juices, we have all the options that may be available to you or suited to you. Call me on 0845-257-6674 or go to noshdetox.com and click on the right program for you. I'm right here to help you and support you. Thank you. Detox is an award-winning company for your ultimate health improvement. Nosh Detox system works on all areas of the body, having dealt with thousands of clients whose health dramatically improved within days. For more details, visit noshdetox.com. Noshdetox.com.